Okay, so um, Scott and I kalegoed religiously for a number of weeks, a couple of months, and now here it is. Um, let's see, October, October. Joseph has moved to Fort Collins. He's starting his first semester at a new school. And um, his friend decided to go with him. So he's got a roommate that he knows. And so that made it easier for both of them. Um, I don't hear from him nearly as much as I thought I might. So I know it's going well. And um, after Let's see, after my brother came to visit, it was like a mark of old and new. He was like the marker. And when I waved goodbye to him, said, I love you, I was saying goodbye to the old, the old reality. Not that he won't be around or my family won't be around, but they, I, I was able to differentiate myself from that old reality. And so right after he was gone, um, I could feel, I could feel a difference, like embodying more the new. And as I was preparing to go to the convention at the end of May, getting all my supplies and making the hotel reservations and all the little details, um, I... Well, I, I, put, I put an ad in two different uh, art publications, so two national magazines. And from, the, um, from those issues coming out, I was thinking more about who was going, who in their readership was going to see these ads, the collectors, the gallery people. But actually, um, the editors, of both companies, they went to look at my website and they saw this screen screenplays, what's that? And they looked at the screenplay um, website and that prompted them to want to write a feature on me because that's something that they haven't covered before and an artist screenwriter. So that made them really curious and so now I have one coming out at the end of this year and one um, for next year. And so that, that happened before even the, I mean, that got scheduled before the convention came about. And so I knew that was happening. And um, I got, I had you do update my website to make sure that when people go there and they see the ad, they, they see everything I want them to see. So we got that done before the convention and before those issues came out. And um, Scott and I had clay goed about the convention and that like just, it was almost like writing the script and handing it out when I got there and everybody played their parts and it was just, um, you know, it just, it, it, and it became nothing about the accomplishment. It was just about the fascination of what you can do with your soul and your spirit and the security or certainty that you can live each day with that the natural order of things are just as certain as the sun coming up tomorrow and every other day. And once you realize that, it's just a whole different way of living on the planet and, and in the spirit world. And um, that, that's what it all became about. It wasn't about the accomplishment or the money or um, anything, any of the things that were coming in, all of those, um, the, the people calling, the, the collectors wanting paintings, the energy that that brought to me to do more paintings, 
the um, all of that is just the natural flow of things. And I realized somewhere in there, oh, I don't have to sell everything before I can make new paintings. I can do it all together as I feel like doing. There's no, there are no rules except to follow the natural order of things. And um, so it's like a whole different future that I'm looking at. And Scott and I had talked about wanting people to join us in this whole thing. Like Lola wants to join me right now. <laughs> um, and, but it, that, even that became just, you know, something we wanted and something we were working towards. And another thing that we could find certainty in, but um, it also became a non-issue because we were creating things that we wanted to create. And so people were showing up, whether they realized they were doing it in any kind of um, way that was um, well, that was part of the natural order of things. And um, so there was like, like I can feel the, the real possibility of going, oh, I know how to do this and have power and I can make people do things, but, and, and where a person could take that. But I, I could feel also that the, the, um, the power would just shut off if you used it un unethically. So it was all about the feeling and the desire behind it, the intention behind it. And, um, it wasn't about being able to control and know how things would come about because there are just incredible surprises that I couldn't have thought of that are just keep happening and exponential um, results from the thing that I could see. And then all of these other events spoke off of it. But now I'm, I am realizing more um, I'm able to see the um, cause and effect more thoroughly than I could before. And so every day is just like an adventure of experimentation and finding out more and learning more. And, um, and it's, it's being funded because it's learning about God's universe and with an intention of being in harmony with all of the natural laws, um, you know, things are changing that I just couldn't even have, um, have thought of in February or March. You know, my habits, my sleep, my eating, uh, my diet, the people who are showing up, all these things are changing and um, that lack of worry about money just opens up a whole channel of energy coming to me and flowing through me so that um, like, like it felt like putting those ads in the, um, in the magazines were a were also sort of a, a marker that I was willing to invest in this um, well in what I was being guided to do really I was willing to let go of a thousand dollars to to do these print ads and do the experiment see what happened and um, so Every time I do something like that, it builds my confidence in the guidance that I get, in the feelings that I have. And so now it's just like instantaneous. There's no, oh, should I? Or what if this happens? There's no second guessing. It's just, okay, let's do it. And um, and just having Scott to to witness this is 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 so valuable.
be, otherwise I would just be on my own and people would just say, oh, you're just lucky. But you've seen it all unfold. Wow. Wow. Good, good. Yeah. Ooh, juicy. Like that one. Yeah. All right, I'll do the supercharge. Okay. Just while it's really fresh. Yes. So. Okay. Go ahead. So Rita's been, been working on all these fun experiments of discovery and life, and she's able to um, kind of really test waters and test boundaries and really um, learn the value of, of letting go and releasing something into the universe just to let God and the universe take over. And the, the, the change in her business and the change in her attitude is profound. It's, there's a newfound kind of peace and it a newfound kind of excitement as well. It's almost like it's, um, yeah, it's, it's this, she talks about a natural order of things. Um, but it's more than that. I feel like it's as if, um, she understands that she has her, her hand on like harp strings through the universe. Whenever a moment comes to her, she checks in with her gut right away and she knows it's almost like this intuitive knowing that she knows that this resonates with me right now and I don't have to think about it. I don't have to like convince myself yes or no. I just feel like this is resonating and she knows that if she, if she waits for a moment, she'll feel it whether it's chasing her or not and when it starts chasing her she knows that is that that's correct that this decision is what what she needs to do and not out of desperation but out of a a feeling of i really kind of feel this pulse of the universe that something is going to happen and she leaves that up to the universe she leaves that up to god and she says i am it, these moments where I have this, my hand on the pulse, my ear on the heart of God in the universe, these are the times that I listen and that they don't fail me. Even if something happens where I might lose money, something comes about and I grow as a person. Um, it's one of those things where it's, um, you, it's testing faith, but it's not even testing. It's just, um, this natural way of doing business that is business and life that is kind of flowing like certain number of days, maybe like there might not be anything she does for a number of days. And she's like, I'm testing the universe every day. I'm like checking in by taking naps I'm checking in by, by um, just waiting for phone calls. I'm checking in. And I know in my body when the day is coming for us, she talks about one time how she knew in her body that she had napped enough days that she knew something was going to happen. And then things just started happening. Um, it was this natural way of progressing that just came right out of her. And it, it's, it's a playful kind of way of approaching this because there's no worry. There's no doubt. And, and yes, time passes, but it's not about, desperation it's not about um having to sharpen your skills it's not about having to gain clarity it is just about a total deep trust and the total <laughs> trust that everything in life is learning everything is discovery everything is <clears throat> time and the universe and god um speaking to us and sometimes it takes a little while for that voice to come to our ears. And, um, but it never means that you don't, you know, start, you know, with that, that time where you know in your body that it's, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. It feels in my body that this is chasing me. And so it's been a really inspiring for Rita to do this. She paints when she wants, she paints when she knows and it's almost like it's just, it does come out of her. She, um, if she wakes up and says, I'm going to paint today, she paints and then it's, and then it's just like, I have a feeling that this is going to be set aside for a little while and then, and I need to just wait to finish this next week. And then it comes about. So it's not this set amount of like, I have time to do this. So I have to do this. Well, 
the universe and God makes the time for her, you know? So, so she has this time that is so flexible and so pliable and that it's one of those ideas. She's also come up with this idea of flexible, pliable time and discovery when it comes to like our time when we age, we have this flexible time that, um, that weaves in and out. And so age and time and space and our life on this earth and the distance and time don't matter because it's just the way things flow. Oh, that's so good. Oh, mm. Mm. got a kitty. You can feel it. She's oh, good. On it. <laughs> good. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right you said I, I like these days where we do this because it's just uh -huh. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. we're definitely tapping into something yes well good mm. well mm. do you want to talk about yours or do you want me to go and we'll just talk about your stuff and we'll um, are you ready to go yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so a number of months have passed since Rita and I Kai Legoed, and it was very interesting. The time we Kai Legoed, when Rita said I could see a distinct um, moment and measurement in time when her brother had left, and she was saying goodbye to her brother at that point. By her speaking that to me, I kind of like felt at that time a few months back now it's probably October um I have moved already I had just finished moving but when she had spoken about that that moment of clarity where she saw the like that was the moment between times I realized at that point months ago that that was what I was seeking that I needed a marker to kind of show that this is where I was at. And, and then I focused on that almost immediately. And then throughout the, that day, I'd woken up from a nap and I focused on this idea of, I need a marker to separate the time between now or, or between this past life and a life in the future, this like pause. And I really realized that that was what my life needed I needed that pause. And even though I like, um, I knew right after that, I did some work to right after that to like kind of clear away um, a client that wasn't serving me. I cleared away like their work, which wasn't really tough at all. I just did it so I could clear it away. And I had a day off the next day and um, spent that whole day just writing and visioning about what this space and time was like in the present. It was a needed marker for me because at that time I was really dealing with, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about, I was moving, I knew I would move and I was like still had my feet a few months into my life um, in Minnesota really just kind of a little bit wrenching about how I was going to deal with that. But that marker that she had talked about that helped her at that time also helped me. And I realized that Rita is like natural at this. And sometimes I have to like pick up on that energy, but it was so needed because that was like, I had to give myself permission to go through a doorway. And that's something that I also carry through with my work I no longer take any work from people who are, who are not trusting and it's really important. And it's not about, um, it's not about me. It's not about them. It's about tapping into this universal, um, energy. And it's, if I take on a client who's so in, involved in the fonts and the sizes and the colors, and how I use punctuation and how they, they want to micromanage everything in their life. Um, I know that they're not in the flow. I know that they're not 
trusting what the universe is going to bring them. And I'm very honest with them about that, that, that if you get so granular with this, you'll stifle the creative force that I could bring through and you won't be able to discover what's going to be next in your business. Let me be, and I tell people, let me be a creative visioning force for you, not just a web designer. Let me be a creative visioning force for you through a channeling, through whatever comes through to me from the universe, from spirit, from, you know, God, from this unknown space. Um, and let me tap into that and let's see where it goes for you. And we may not work out, but I don't believe that you will have that opportunity with very many other designers. And this is where I really authentically have, because at the same time, when I was dealing back then, very stark contrast was really telling me I had, they were both yoga studio owners and one was focused on the fonts and the colors and um, micromanaging my creativity. And the other one was telling me, here's the text, read through it. I trust you, you have full creative guidance and I can't wait to see what I discover when you, when you bring things about, which was such a stark contrast. And I believe that without those two contrasts, that, that really propelled me into like this new way of working now where I really do tell people, tell clients that, you know, I'm not your typical designer anymore. I cannot work that way anymore. It's because I honor this connection I honor this connection to source, whatever that is, that my creativity comes through in some very unexpected and interesting ways. And if you help, if you ride this path with me, hopefully we can come up with something really cool that comes about because when you tap into something that's really unexpected, you really kind of discover authentic parts of yourself that you didn't know were there. You can reach new potentials that you never thought you could, which is what I was doing. And so it's just, it's now starting to become in a new place, in a new environment where I remember distinctly that point where I had to like put a marker between things, get an older thing, older paradigm completely out of me. And, um, or else it was going to stifle me creatively and it was going to, cause a lot more blocks and a lot more strife. <clears throat> and um, now I live in a much more exciting place where it's like, I don't know what's going to happen. I tell people when I design things for them or that I'm creatively collaborating with them. And I say, I have no idea what's going to happen. I love it. And well, let's come along and do it. Um, and so that it takes a really creative mind and it takes a very trusting mind, but I have results that I can show people, case studies of folks that I've worked with that I can show people, people they can call to, to if they really need that. But really the ones that I like to work with really can understand right away. They're like, this is something that I wanna tap into. This courageousness, and I, I really, I grow as an entrepreneur or a, it's not even a term as a creative being by, by attracting those folks. And I've changed my website to attract those kind of folks um, by defining what I'm not as well. So, and it was such a, such a needed step. And, and, um, but I remembered it from that cut Lego call where Rita had waved goodbye to a brother and um, how it was like there was a marker between the past and then the future that was coming through in a new way of working. So it really inspired me in that very moment. And now I'm blissfully busy, I'm blissfully napping. So I'm blissfully busy, but I'm blissfully not busy. And, um, but I can, I can say that I'm busy or I can say that I'm not busy because it feels the same way. It's not, um, about deadlines. It's not about pressure. It's about allowing creativity to flow and people will actually trust that. And I'm being supported even more than I was previously um, by really tapping into it. It's amazing. Like if, if how 
I wish I could have done this shift earlier, but I had to come to it. And I think this is just the natural progression, but um, it's a younger, more um, vibrant kind of energy that kind of is coming through, through me. And I really needed that because if I would have stayed in that old paradigm, I couldn't have come through where I am now. And I couldn't have helped the people I help now. I couldn't have helped them build wonderful, creative, authentic businesses that help shift the world. Um, I don't take clients who don't, who don't want that anymore. Um, I work with folks who have this desire or this knowing that their work is meant to be an expression of celebration, no matter what that is, whether they're a home builder or a, um, a hypnotherapist or, or just an artist, they feel that they, there's something coming out of them that will affect other people and motivate them or help change the world in some way to create this, this positive interdimensional space for lack of a better word or a better phrase. And, um, it's not, it's not so tough anymore to turn people down and say, well, I don't know if we'll resonate well because of this. Um, but let me, I have a few folks that I can give, put your way. And I've had one person come to me after that and there's like, okay, you're right. I'm ready. Let's talk some more. I'm ready to like, um, take the plunge because that other paradigm didn't really work well for me. So I may as well try this one. Yeah. You had a lot of good little key words in there that I think you'll notice when you listen to this again. Mm. The things that we know. It's amazing. <laughs> 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 Okay, I'm gonna go. All right, so um, my crazy brother showing up just in the middle of the night. You know, I always knew he had a, a, a goodness in him, even though he's just a madman. He marked a Maybe, maybe it was a, a, something going on in the planets and the universe, an ener energetic shift. And he was just like the, the delivery guy that, that came to us and, and showed us that this is the day. And so I watched Scott pick up on that and just change everything you know, things you, you've been talking about for a while, but um, it all just became more concrete, but energetic at the same time, which was a really interesting thing to watch you embody that um, bringing people to your business, not just for the sake of funding you and your business, but for the, the um, exponential results coming off of you working with them to create incredible sites that they trusted you to come up with and the impact it had on their business and the people who did business with them. And you had talked about kind of feeling out on your own in this whole shifting of how things work, how the world works, how business works, and, and wanting a community of some sort. And it just started unfolding naturally with you really going with the feeling you had about clients coming to you. And we all give off clues all the time. And you could, you could tell now you can tell instantly if somebody's a micromanager if, or if they're going to trust you and that that means that they can trust what, what kind of gifts are coming from the universe at all times. So 
when you explain that to your your new clients, they feel the the certainty that you feel, and their businesses a lot of times just start uh, expanding even before their new website comes out because because of the conversation that they've had just about designing their new website and they trust you to be that creative visioning force. And it's, it's increasing the courage of the people that you work with. You're, it's not even courage for you anymore. It's just natural to, tr to trust what, what is coming through you rather than being concerned about next month's bills or getting enough clients or chasing anybody, you know it's coming because you are, um, you are trusting that you are a creative visioning force. And it's not just in, in the websites that you create, it's everything. You, you, it's almost like everything you do is creating a website in a way, because everything you do is going to have some sort of um, connection to other people. They're going to, they're going to be, um, well, it's not even finding it. It's, it's just, you're sort of feeling where the links are between what you do right now, go, go play tennis, the person you, you play tennis against, you feel that, that there's a link there that's going to um, be either open or not. And you can kind of decide whether or not you want to um, make that an active link or, or not. So because of your website understanding, you're, you're seeing reality in a whole different way. Thank <laughs> you.